and it's a Friday night, and we are just a few minutes late, but Friday, Friday night, night yeah. time for evidence-based triathlete. Yes, uh, I was actually so glad that you you, uh, you wanted to do this tonight because, you know, it's uh, it's funny when you're on vacation, you you start to have lots of different ideas <laughs> of things going through your head for your podcast. Yeah, right? yeah. And because this is post race week, uh, I've had lots of ideas. And, and you know, you you've talked a lot about like writing stuff down afterwards, and yeah. I do a lot of like deep thoughts afterwards of like, mm -hmm. you know, what what could I be doing better? Um, what I need to do more of? What I need to do less of? As we, you know, as the season as the season rolls on, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the process that you go through the week after a race is it? Oh yeah, I love that. And and I actually I love this is what I love about reading race reports too is I, you know, I see what other people are about, how they're evaluating their training or their race or what have you. And, and it's sort of, you can pick up on different things that way as well, but no, for sure. Uh, and I, I love the topic that you picked because this has been a, this has been a little bit of a Dom's week. <laughs> exactly. No, it's been a total Dom's week. And, um, you know, <sighs> Dom's is a really interesting thing because when we, when we really think about it, like, why does your body do this? Mm -hmm. Like, if you were designing the human, yeah. like, why do we have delayed onset muscle soreness? Yeah, right, right. It, it seems to me to not serve a purpose, right? right. In, in, in that, why would, let's say, I mean, you know, I'm out hunting. I got, you know, thinking like, you know, back to, you know, Neanderthal times. I'm out hunting yeah. and I have a really long, tough hunt. Yeah. And let's say I'm not successful. Right. And then tomorrow I got to do it again. Right. Well, if, I, if I'm sore and I can't really move well, mm -hmm. this is not a, this is not a, a, a good thing. Do you, know what I mean? do you know what I mean? I do. I do. And, and you know, I did a little bit of reading today just to brush up on some, some points that I, I wanted to look up. And I came across a, a phrase that I really liked. And, and I think it, it addresses this point that, that you're mentioning is that it doesn't make sense that you have this, but the paper was uh, stated, the author stated, DOMS is a side effect of muscle repair. Oh, yeah. To it yeah. totally is a side effect. It right. totally right. is and, a side effect. And, and, I, and, I, like, and so, <laughs> so I, I, that's right. That's right. But, but in that sense, that when you get that pain, in essence, that's a recognition that you stress the system and now you're repairing. And either exactly. that's good or bad. I mean, because you don't always need to go to that point where you're going to stress the system to the point that the repair is almost worse than the uh, than the than the, uh, the the input, I guess. So, no, I, I and that and that was that was the answer that I came up with too, right? Is yeah. is it's actually this message to our body saying, actually, no, you don't need to go hunting today. Yeah, right. You you need to repair, and the best way to repair is not not to do a tremendous amount mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you can do some things but you know you can't go do what you did again because you'll throw yourself into even a deeper hole and a deeper yep. hole and potentially injury mm -hmm. you know you can you can continue to train through doms mm -hmm. right i would suspect that if you kept going actually i know this you keep going and keep going keep going you're going to actually injure yourself yeah and i think it's a yeah. it's, it is there is the mechanism there of saying, Hey, this hurts. Don't, you know, don't push it yeah. because you're going to get injured. Well, we're jumping in pretty deep already, but I mean, that's our, that, that's almost going to be our conclusion at the end of this talk. So maybe yeah. let, let's start with a, a little bit more in terms of just, I mean, we're using DOMS and, uh, and I know we've talked about this before, but let's go ahead and, and uh, define DOMS. Okay, so delayed onset muscle soreness. And anybody that has done a triathlon or done a, a long run or a long race um, will have experienced this. Anybody that's been to the gym that hasn't been to the gym in a while and, and that pain you have the you know 24 to 72 hours later, um, that's delayed onset muscle soreness. Yep. Okay. And without getting into we'll get into what causes it, but ultimately, um, Ultimately, that's what we're that's what we're talking about. Yep, it's the delayed part, which is really an interesting phenomena, and it's delayed 
anywhere from 12, 24, and, and the pain may peak anywhere from between 24 and 72 hours after you're done with your exercise. And so that's always the interesting aspect of this is the delayed part. It's not the pain during the exercise. It's the pain after the exercise has stopped. And now you're, uh, you're sitting there the next day or, or even later in the evening, whatever it is, and all of a sudden it becomes really painful. So yeah, yeah. The after a post race is very pretty typical. Or if you go hike Mount Charleston, and uh, you go up and down Charleston, you probably will end up with some DOMS uh, as well. Uh, yeah. But even if John, if you just went to the gym and you haven't been to the gym in a while, and you did bench press, and let's say you yeah. did three sets of ten as hard as you could, you would have DOMS. Mm -hmm. You know, if once again you're not accustomed, that's the, that's the big point here. It's worse when it, when you're unaccustomed to it. Mm -hmm. So if you run at, you know, let's say you run every other day and you're consistently, you run every other day, you run five miles every other day or 10 miles every other day, whatever you've become accustomed to. And you go out and do that same thing. You won't, you won't have doms. Mm -hmm. The situation and what's happening in racing, we tend to go harder for longer, mm -hmm. especially in triathlon racing. You know, John, you did an Olympic race last weekend. It was what two hours and two and two and a half hours about. Uh, right? I, I was two eleven uh, um, okay. for me. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. So just over two hours and okay, so two hours and eleven minutes. So how often do you train at that intensity for two hours and eleven minutes? Uh, only race day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you're not your, your body's not accustomed to doing that and so you you actually could prevent doms mm -hmm. if you could mm -hmm. do that intensity more often yeah but i like problem, i like i i like the way that you're looking at that is that the doms is more likely to happen when you've stressed the body in a way that it's not used to especially exactly you know. exactly and so, so for me my, go, ahead, go ahead i was just going to say for me it's interesting the DOMS after a sprint triathlon, uh, which was what, three weeks ago, was yeah. worse than the DOMS after the Olympic triathlon, which was longer, but a lower intensity. The sprint was yeah. a much higher intensity and, and hence the, the DOMS was much greater for me and longer lasting uh, from the sprint race than versus the Olympic. But I will, I'll throw out another piece to you. You had DOMS two weeks ago, Mm -hmm. right now you become accustomed to the yeah there you answer. go <laughs> that's right you see what i'm saying so there's yeah. so i i'm betting if you would have done the olympic two weeks ago you would have been just as sore if mm -hmm. not sore yeah so i'm thinking you and i are both racing in two weeks right mm -hmm. you're racing in two weeks uh yeah our, yeah it is oh well, my goodness our doms after the next race in two weeks will be less yeah even though we could go, you know, we're going, we're going to go to high intensity. You're going longer. Right. I'm right, actually going right. a little bit shorter. Um, but my run is going to be a lot. More, there's going to be a lot more downhill. Yeah. Um, so I think that, I, I think that this is a cumulative thing. And one of the, one of the training mistakes that you and I make, and I'm going to throw you in on, the, on this as well. It's you and I don't do a lot of high intensity no. uh, sessions, especially no. not high intensity run, running sessions because we tend to get injured doing those things. Yeah, that's right. You know, I'm, I'm very much a 95% of the time, we would say yeah. zone two or moderate to uh, even easy uh, type exercise. Well, I, I'll, uh, I actually was thinking about that because the next race for me is the 70.3. And I almost uh, am expecting, I'm expecting doms, but yeah. uh, it, I think that's a different uh, mechanism than even the doms that uh, I had from a sprint race. Because the sprint race was whatever, just over an hour. The uh, 70.3 will take, I don't know, five hours, whatever. Um, I think the, the cause of the delayed onset muscle soreness, um, the mechanism, might be a little bit different and therefore the the intensity of it may be different as well yep no i i, I completely agree you know i've raced some 70.3 races where i didn't run very fast because mm -hmm. of because of injury or whatever and i had, and i had less significantly less dogs yeah, right and where if i if i run faster 
um, I tend, you know, I'll, I'll have more doms. Mm -hmm. And once again, I think it's because I'm just not as accustomed. And, you know, my doms this week has been some of the worst I've ever had. Um, but I, I, you know, I haven't been running. And right. I think we talked about this since for six weeks before I only ran assisted mm -hmm. and on the, you know, on the lever or on the alter G. And so I kind of expected this to happen, right? Boost. Like if, if, if I, or, yeah, or the boot, the boost. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, um, exactly. So it makes sense to me, right? Cause I've actually, de you know, detrained myself to take on the, yeah, yeah. the, the pounding basically. Yeah, that's right. And um, so once again, my body is not accustomed to, to, uh, to run like that. Mm -hmm. And once again, I, I was fully aware that this was going to happen. And, and I tried to do things to, to mitigate DOMS. And we'll talk about that at the end of things you can try. Uh, none of it worked. <laughs> yeah, great, great. And, no, I love that. And, you know, I think, I think the DOMS is, is it triggers an inflammatory response and we can get into a little bit of this more. And one of my com complicating factors is my rheumatoid arthritis. And so mm -hmm. what's interesting is, you know, I expect, you know, the reason I keep most of my exercise intensity training very low is to minimize that, you know, flare up of, of RA. But after a race, it's like, oh, it's going to flare up. And so, yeah, so yeah. mine uh, was even in my hands. I, my hands are almost better now uh, at this point. But it, it's, um, it's a, it's a, there, there's a lot of complicating factors. Once, it, once you throw in that's an inflammatory response and your, your, that's a side effect of repairing. Yeah. Then, then it, 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 it is just a matter of watching that stimulus that's going to cause that. Yeah. I think now we should maybe then talk about inflammation a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so well, I teach quite a bit about, you know, quite, uh, I actually have like three classes where I specifically talk about inflammation and understanding that there are many types of inflammation. Yeah, right. Um, and there are, we need to separate it out chronic versus acute inflammation. So mm -hmm. for you with RA, um, you have a underlying chronic inflammation that is occurring, mm -hmm. right? And then with training you and racing, you're going to develop a, an acute bout of inflammation, almost like an injury. Mm -hmm. And when we're exercising and we, you know, especially when we're doing eccentric exercise yep. where we're actually um, uh, we actually are, are basically causing micro trauma mm -hmm. to the muscle fibers. Yep. And that stimulus is, is going to st basically th that trauma is going to stimulate an inflammatory response, just like it was a, a small injury. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is with an acute situation of, of inflammation, it's actually a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Chronic inflammation is really seen as a bad thing, but acute inflammation in response to exercise or even response to injury is a good thing. And there's actually, um, there is a, uh, a cascade of things that occur in response to that injury. Mm -hmm. And there are, you know, the things that we tend to think of that we see or we feel, so pain, swelling, redness, uh, heat, um, are all associated with, uh, with inflammation, but within this, there is a microcosm of different pathways and, and, um, and chemicals and chemical mediators and all these things that are, that are happening. And their main job is to actually clear out injured debris mm -hmm. and then stimulate muscle regeneration and growth. Yep. And so this week, that's what our bodies have been doing on the acute side, right? Yep. They, they've been trying to get rid of all the damage we did and rebuild. And if you time this stuff right, right? If we, we train, we recover, we race, we recover, we train, we recover. We actually keep this cycle going all of the time where we're actually going into a chronic inflammation and we're allowing our body to heal and we're keeping this cycle going. Mm -hmm. Why I'm bringing this up is because there is a misnomer out there that all inflammation is bad right. and that we need to stop and then we need to stop inflammation. Now, in the case of RA or other rheumatologic issues where inflammation is chronic, yeah, we want to reduce that for sure. But in response to injury or training, decreasing inflammation 
is is, is probably a, a, a negative thing because it doesn't allow for that second piece, mm -hmm. well, both pieces, getting rid of the damaged tissue and stimulating repair and growth. Does mm -hmm. that does that make sense? No, I, I love it. And, and I think that's where we started was that DOMS is a purposeful thing. It's actually just a side effect of muscle rebuilding. And, and uh, Bob actually asked a question before you, you uh, went down that road, which was a really good explanation. He said, doesn't getting DOMS mean that you're going to get a good training effect, tear muscles down to build them back stronger? And I think that you, you provided a perfect answer to that already. And the answer is yes, but you also need to avoid getting into that extreme range where then you talked about the recovery period, because then we get into that, that situation of rhabdomyolysis where it becomes very yeah. dangerous if you've got too much damage, too much inflammation. Now you're putting on a, a, a load on your system that is re becomes really a dangerous situation. Yeah. Well, and, and if we look at like inflammatory markers, and there's lots of research on this after marathons, after triathlons, um, we're actually seeing these increases in inflammatory markers, in particular, like uh, the one that's mostly studied is interleukin-6, mm -hmm. um, yep. that we're seeing that's, that can be raised for quite a long time afterwards. I think full Ironman, they're still measuring these things like two weeks after. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so the, the body is, is going through this process continually, and, and you have to be careful not to push too quickly, to, like, like you were saying, uh, you know, too quickly afterwards, or, or the body basically gets, uh, it's almost like it turns to, uh, catabolic and starts breaking yeah. the, itself mm -hmm. too uh, too much. So that being said, John, um, when you this this week, what did you do? Like, what did you do as far as training this week? Do, let's say you get into treatment strategies. Like, did you was this a normal training week for you? Uh, no, it wasn't wasn't normal. But uh, because I've got this uh, seventy point three coming up in two weeks, I knew I needed to you know, keep my mindset that I was still building as yeah. opposed to, okay, I, I know I'm going to be sore after an Olympic distance race, but I, I've got to sort of work through them. And so um, my plan going into the Olympic was to do some really light exercise for the next three days afterwards. I knew I still wanted to get a long bike ride in and I knew I could get the long bike ride in on uh, the day after before everything started kicking in. And so uh, I, I still did a, a long ride uh, on Sunday. The race was Saturday. But then right after that, it was very much um, starting Monday, a very um, easy, uh, low impact. But the key for me was to keep moving because uh, even coming back, driving back from St. George, even though it was only a two and a half hour drive, by the time I got home, I was, uh, I was pretty much a, a, a mess at that point, so. Yeah, you, I love the fact you mentioned this because the research is very clear. The number one thing you can do to help mitigate this and to actually help the process is yeah. active recovery. Mm -hmm. yep. And we call active recovery, you know, it's purposeful movement that's not too strenuous. Right. So the day after race, like for me, I, I was super sore even the next day. Mm -hmm. Like so on Sunday, I was super sore, but I got out and I walked. Yeah. Um, wasn't pretty. I was, I was definitely limping, but just laying in bed doesn't really, doesn't, doesn't help the process, mm -hmm. right? You actually have to be purposeful. And then on Monday, I got to swim in and it was mostly with the pull buoy, but, I, you know, just once again, getting blood flowing, um, super important and then there's like there's a hydrostatic uh compression thing that can that, that can help there as well and i mean i, I honestly I, I just either swam or walked until wednesday and then wednesday i did an hour bike ride easy mm -hmm. just getting moving and then thursday yeah. a little harder bike ride and actually wednesday was a swim and, and then a little harder bike ride thursday and today was the first time i ran mm -hmm. and it was not pretty <laughs> You know, I wanted to run a half hour easy about 25 minutes. And I'm like, that's it. Pull the plug. I yeah, yeah. like my legs. They're still too sore. Yeah. Um, and you got to know when to, you got to know when to pull the plug. And so I pulled yeah. the plug and I'll go for another ride tomorrow. And cause like, like you, I've got a race in two weeks. I'm trying to stay fit. So mm -hmm. that's the key is you don't want to lose fitness during this time, but as long as you stay active mm -hmm. and keep the aerobic side going, 
uh, I think you can stay, uh, I think yeah. you can stay fit. Well, I think that's I, what you were trying to well. I, I love it. And I love the exercises that you talked about, you know, mostly walking, uh, biking, you know, non-impact, because one of the mechanisms for DOMS is that eccentric or that, that muscle that's trying to contract, but it's actually getting longer. And so walking downhill is not uh, great or, or running downhill. You're going to get a bit more DOMS that way than, than running uphill for sure. Uh, and uh, I also incorporate a, a lot of running in the water at that uh, early phase as well. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, and then a little bit on Thursday still uh, just running in the water. And then I, I started to introduce running over ground uh, probably about uh, three days uh, after the race. So that would have been Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I think Wednesday I started. So. And how did it feel? The run um same as you you know that that first that first run is it, just you know 30 minutes uh like 32 minutes to do three miles uh but yeah. my again my mindset is easy 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 and uh and we've got a couple of questions on here that relate to this um it, it is a subjective and it is a little bit of of um you know knowing how you're going to respond uh you know, but you know the training intensity I'm using is only high enough so that I know that I'm still going to be able to train the next day. So Bob, Bob asks, you know, and where, how do you draw the line between enough and too much? And that's that's a, that's a great question. It's a tough one because it is it, there's a lot of subjectivity. I mean, you can start looking at metrics and watch your heart rate. Uh, your pulse rate and see how that is. Heart, we've talked about heart rate variability in the past. Uh, you can look use metrics like that, but there is also just this subjective feeling and no acute pain. Uh, if you have any acute pain with any foot strike, you got to stop and just uh, walk. But really the biking and the swimming are probably and running in the water or running with assisted uh, body weight. Those are probably the best ways to, to exercise and and uh recover from doms yeah and like no hill sprints on your bike mm -hmm. and you know what i mean it's, it's just aerobic you know yeah. like for me this week the first ride i was like okay i don't want my heart rate above 120 yeah i just you know that's kind of the limit and then on thursday it was okay let's bring it to 130 maybe mm -hmm. 135 uh, you know as so i was going up a hill and that's it. It's, you know, there's no need to do anything more. It was more about just, you know, get a couple hours in mm -hmm. and, and, you know, continue to continue the process and continue. Like the, the key here really is blood flow mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. actually getting blood flow to those injured areas. Um, basically to once again, bring nutrients in yeah. and get rid of get rid of bad things. Mm -hmm. um, so, so no, I think that, you know, you and I, fortunately, we've raced a lot and we've had doms a lot. Um, I do like the fact that you mentioned about the car ride. Um, it's something that, if, especially if you have to fly after a race, yeah. um, I've had to do it before where I was, you know, you've done too, where you're on the East mm -hmm. coast and you got to fly back the next morning. No. Oh my gosh. That's, that's the worst. <laughs> it is. <laughs> You get, well, up, you, you get off that plane and you're like, oh my gosh, I think I need that wheelchair over there because I can't make it to the bags. But the key is getting up and yeah, you know, walk, you know, walk back and forth in the plane. Yeah. Um, you meant to go to the bathroom five times, but you don't really have to go five times, but you, you know, <laughs> yeah. just get get it, get up and get up and move. It's you know, it's definitely a strategy. And once again, that's active, that's active yeah. recovery. It seems very counterintuitive, but movement and and light light exercise is probably the best uh way to to attack uh doms and so we got another great question from eric here what is a safe amount of time to fully recover from doms onset 24 48 hours fully recovered or 24 48 hours you're going to start having your peak pain probably 24 to 72 hours it is it is really um you know individual in terms of how much you're going to get it's based upon your fitness level how different the exercise was that caused the DOMS. Uh, so, but what we need to be careful of is doing too much too soon and then extending out the damage over a longer period. And then it becomes, it can become a chronic, chronic problem. 
Yeah, well, basically what happens is the, the acute turns into the chronic inflammation mm -hmm. and you get, stuck in this, you get stuck in this pattern of, of chronic inflammation. And, and so the right answer to that is, like you said, it depends. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if, for example, like I can get doms after a 5K, right? Yeah. If I run really hard, but two or three days later, I'm fine. Yeah. And, but, you know, a 70.3 where I really push the run, um, it could be five or six days mm -hmm. or longer. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you have to listen to your body. Yeah. And um, if you're especially running, if you're running and you feel like, you know, sharp pains, you got to shut yeah. it down. It's, it's, it's too early. And remember, you're by continuing to go at that point, you're not helping yourself. You're actually mm -hmm. hurting yourself. You're, you're digging and a deeper hole. <laughs> you're digging a deeper hole and, 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 and probably with, with a bigger shovel than, yeah. you, originally, yeah. than, than, than you originally did. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that uh, everyone's a little bit different. I also can tell you that um, having worked with uh, a lot of young athletes uh, uh, as a coach and athletic trainer for many years, uh, younger athletes tend to bounce back quicker. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So that's something that, you know, I think age does play a role. Um, I think that, you know, as I'm getting older, my doms, it, it tends to, to hang on and linger a little longer than it used mm -hmm. to. And I know that's just anecdotal, but I'm sure there's research on that as well. Um, you know, when I used to work with, you know, 15, 16 year olds, they would rarely get doms. And if they yeah, did, it was like, it was like, okay, a day later, they're, they're fine. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it, it does. Um, it does depend on age. Oh, and yeah. then also general health, right? Like, mm -hmm. like you were talking about, you know, if you have a rheumatologic issue or you have an inflammatory issue already, um, you know, you, you probably are going to have this, you know, it's going to be a more pronounced. No, you got to manage that. But here's the beauty. And this is one of the reasons why I really like triathlon as a sport and especially uh, as, as I'm older is okay. So I can't run well, but I can swim yeah. and, yeah. you know, planning your, uh, training program, knowing that you're going to have a race and knowing you're going to be sore afterwards, plan your training program. So you maybe spend a little bit more time in the pool or at the yeah. end of your, your swim, you do a little running in the water, even 10 minutes, you know, that type of movement is going to help you recover from DOMS and ultimately make you a stronger athlete. And same thing with biking. You're probably able to get back on the bike sooner than definitely than running. And running is yeah. the one that you got to just really be careful of because that's the one that, you know, if you still have some lingering issues with, with muscles, uh, it's such a repetitive, high impact, high load on the body that you just have to be really careful. Yeah. And I, the other one I was going to say with the running is uh, running on a soft surface. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be best. So if mm -hmm. you can run on grass, artificial turf, mm -hmm. um, I think that would be, would be best. And then this is another time where actually I use my race shoes, you know, cause they're, they're the extra thick foamy ones mm -hmm. and um, they tend to tend to absorb more of the forces. It would also be a, a time to do that. Yeah. No, that's great. Okay, so Bob writes, uh, I don't get doms, I just get drained and tired to the point where I'm a zombie. And yeah, those are, that's a different response. And the doms is a pain. And it's a, it's a very um, unique pain that again, it occurs after long after the exercise has stopped. Uh, the draining part or that general tiredness is just a different mechanism. That's something else going on. Uh, but it is, I think, something that can happen if you start training too soon after doms. I always think, you know, the longer the race, the more time you need, and you may not even feel any doms at that point, but you still are having this inflammatory response that you're talking about. And it can take a week, two weeks, it can take four weeks to recover from an Ironman, an iron distance type race, because the body is constantly in that period of time trying to, trying to repair and that's that that's that zombie feel that you feel, uh, uh, Bob, is that that that's a, that's not necessarily great either. And um, you just have to be careful with that because that can lead to long term problems with training. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's talk about the some of these treatment strategies we wanted to talk about. So um, the first and foremost for me is uh, hydration and nutrition after mm -hmm. a rape. Yeah, good. So um, no, no matter what, uh, you are always dehydrated after a race. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe not as maybe a, uh, even a sprint race. I get dehydrated. Mm -hmm. um, a half Ironman, I definitely get dehydrated. We, you know, we talked about this last week, um, measuring you know body weight and stuff like that. I just know, like you know, when you finish a race and someone hands you a bottle of water, you drink it right, and you almost yeah. drink it right away because you're dehydrated. And that dehydration, I mean, if you lose, we talked about last week, five, six, seven pounds uh, of water. It takes us a, a concerted effort to get that back. Yeah. Um, almost to the point where you're sick of drinking because you get bloated and you get mm -hmm. kind of full. So, you know, we do know that uh, hydrating the body will help this process because it'll basically give us more blood volume mm -hmm. and more blood volume um, will allow for more basically good things to go in and bad things to go out. So, so that's really important. And then making sure we, you know, get some, uh, you know, get some good recovery fuel. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I have in my, um, yeah, I have it, my, my wife brings a little bag to the finish. I pack it, you know, kind of, it's that. a race bag mm -hmm. and in it is, a, is a protein carbohydrate drink. Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing I go for when I, when I finish is, you know, making sure I get, you know, it's 30 grams of protein. I think mm -hmm. it's 30 grams of carbohydrates. And I get those in uh, as quickly as I can. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the next, you know, throughout DOMS, making sure that you continue good nutrition and good hydration. The other one um, that is in our notes was um, fats. So yeah. fats, especially your, you know, your omega, uh, omega threes mm -hmm. um, are anti-inflammatory. So things like um, avocados, mm -hmm. um, are, are really important. Um, now what I don't like is what we see at a lot of races at the finish line, it's pizza and French fries. <laughs> and I know it sounds great at that time, yeah, right. but those, uh, you know, those might not be your best option, um, at that time. So look for, and I think everyone knows what nutrient dense foods mm -hmm. are, um, at this point i mean do you do you have a plan when you finish a race as far as hydration nutrition John? oh definitely hydration and uh that that is such a key and, and you know i always you know try to to have uh fluids that i that i want you know back at the hotel or in the trailer or wherever yeah. you know i have a lot of soda water i love that um all yeah. even after a race i will drink uh you know carbonated water or carbonated drinks like uh, coke or sprite whatever I can tolerate. And the longer the, the race, the more I think, you know, fluids when I get done. And then I try to start eating, uh, you know, as can be tolerated because sometimes it is still hard yeah. uh, to start eating really uh, soon afterwards. But yeah, um, it, and you know, that's, uh, but that's why I love your tip. Uh, and uh, it's worth repeating here is that in, that you in your morning clothes bag, you put other foods in so that when you're done with that long race, you have foods in your morning clothes bag that you, yep. you hopefully will be able to eat afterwards, as opposed to even relying on what, whatever's in the, uh, whatever's in the food tent. I think that's such a great idea. Many times I'll, I just don't even go to the, 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 the food tent. Like I, yeah. I know what I need, what yeah. I want. Yeah. And, um, and it's, it's food that's, that has been six, you know, I've been successful with. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. No, and then maybe later, like an hour later, I might go through the food tent. I'm like, oh, okay, you know. And actually, at the race we just had here in Morro Bay, unbelievable food tent. Yeah, yeah, like, great, great. So good. <laughs> they had tons. Of, they had tons of fruit, which yeah. was great. Yeah. And we had uh, grilled chicken or yeah, yeah ro no roasted, roasted chicken salad. It yeah. was it was exceptional. The one other area I'd like to add here, John, is no alcohol. No, um, yeah, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. No, I know it's like a kind of a traditional thing in, in in our sport is oh yeah, you've earned those beers afterwards. You may think you've earned those beers, but 
they dehydrate you yeah. and they put stress on your system because you know ethanol is viewed as a as a poison to our body and it takes energy mm-hmm. to basically clear that alcohol out yeah save the save the beer for a couple of days down the road and yeah. if but post race beer is you know com- completely uh, a no no yeah especially if you're if you've got another race that you're trying to transition and get ready for if it's the end of the or, season or, you know yeah, at the end of the season but uh, exactly. But if it's in the season and you don't care about it, right. we're talking about doms here. If you don't care about yeah, doms, right. you're going to take two or three weeks off. Oh. You know, go for it. But I still think it'd be it's relatively negative as it's going to dehydrate you even further. Well, and I love that, and I, and I like the the thought of thinking about the hydration and the nutrition over you know the period of time that you have doms plus even further beyond that. Because it, yeah. there's the cute, you know, let's refuel right at the end of the race. Let's get, you know, rehydrated at the end of the race. But even paying attention to that a day after, two days after is so critical. Even now, you know, what, what's today? Today's Friday, you know, almost a whole week since uh, the last time I did the, the race, the Olympic distance, I'm still focusing on hydration. I had a nice shake, throw an avocado in, uh, in the smoothie and blend that in, you know, for that same reason, getting some good fat, uh, in the smoothie, adding protein powder to, uh, the smoothie and really still, you know, a week out, still really focusing on, on drinking, uh, water, a lot of water and eating some good foods. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, the next treatment, stri- or treatment strategy we're going to talk about is rest. So yeah. I know we, you know, Here's the thing, this is, you know, we've been kind of dancing around this is when we finish a race, oftentimes you've, you've kind of like two things that can potentially happen. You're not satisfied or you're, you're really happy. Right. If you're not satisfied, you want to get back and train a lot of people right away. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. Like I should, I should have trained harder. Mm-hmm. If I only would have trained harder and it's like, okay, I got to start training tomorrow Yeah. or they did really well. And it's like, okay, yeah, I'm awesome right now. Like I'm in such good shape. I get to, I get to train and, and build more. And we've, we, we've already talked about this, like how important taking some days off is. Mm-hmm. And so rest where you actually are sleeping uh, and sleeping well, super yeah. important. I, I know a lot of people struggle sleeping the night after a race. Yeah. Um, I think, I, you know, I personally attribute it to too much caffeine during the yeah. race, you know, <laughs> You, you take in five, 600 milligrams of caffeine during a race you're or more, sleeping. you're not sleeping. No. And so now you didn't sleep, you know, the night before, maybe you woke up at three forty-five in the morning, right. To yep. get to, mm-hmm. to get to the race. Um, so you've had a poor night's sleep mm-hmm. and now you're going to add another poor night's sleep. So I know it's hard, um, but if you can sleep, and maybe even sleep in the next day. Let's say you finally do get to sleep. Mm-hmm. If you can sleep in, that's great. And if the next day you can take a nap, mm-hmm. we do know that if you can get a little bit more sleep, it will help. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. And it's not easy. It's easier said than done. I'm not a great sleeper myself, yeah. but um, I think that that's an important thing to, to keep in mind. No, I think that that's a great point is really focus on that. When you're supposed to be resting, that you're actually resting. And again, that's a problem. You know, you you and I talked about biking, you know, even a couple of days after the biking that that you did, I'm probably was a lot like mine. I mean, I was a hundred watts. All right. And just spinning, you know, just really, really light exercise just to keep things moving, not really trying to provide a training stimulus. I'm, I'm more trying to really just move the muscles, move the joints, uh, but then, you know, resting, uh, putting the feet up, uh, recovering is, is, is so important. Uh, let me jump in here because this goes along with this. Bob says, will an antioxidant like Q10, a CoQ10 uh, help? Or, uh, you know, I would add in fish oil or things like that. And, and those can uh, help. I, I, I don't know the literature as well on Q10. Have you looked into that? Yeah. So this is a really interesting one. So I wasn't planning to go down this road and, and maybe we should have a, a, someone that has more understanding of nutrition, but here's the thing that I, that is coming you know, from what I've read is antioxidants during this time are actually not a good thing. Mm-hmm. And once again, 
we provide the stimulus to our body. So this oxidative, it's an oxidative stress. So we have uh, things in our mitochondria that produce re, 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 what's it called? reactive oxygen species. And that's what um, antioxidants basically decrease that. Mm -hmm. And but that stimulus is actually one of the things that stimulates you to rebuild. Right. And so having antioxidants at this point is probably not a not necessarily a good thing. Now, I don't know specifically about CoQ10. Uh, mm -hmm. The research has been done most on vitamin E and vitamin C mm -hmm. um, as, you know, as antioxidants and other antioxidants, um, the things that are found in berries, yeah. um, Zath, 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 I, I can't remember the name of it. Right. Um, those are all, those have also been looked at as those potentially delaying uh, the healing. So really an interesting thing uh, when, you, when you look at it, they actually did this cool study. It was at the, the race, uh, the pre uh, Tour de France race called the Dauphiné. Mm -hmm. And they got, um, it was several, several of, the, of the elite cyclists. And what they saw was um, they actually over time and over training produced more re re react reactive oxygen species but also naturally produce more antioxidants. And, mm -hmm. and that's one thing that being does is actually provides a, na a natural balance. And, mm -hmm. and what happens with supplements, sometimes you get, the theory is you get such a high level that it depresses, it depresses the, re the repair phase. So I would just say, stick to food. And, uh, and that one's again, and I don't know specifically about CoQ10 and, it, and it's post-race mm -hmm. stuff, but I'm just, the oxidants in general or well you I, kind I, of as an I always like how you approach this and and you you talk about that and I, I really you know, respect that I think the other part that you've added uh and when we've talked about this uh, in, in other conversations is if you're going to do back-to-back -back races like yeah, you know part. like nationals or you know uh, USAT you race on Friday and then you get another race on Saturday that's a different scenario than what we're talking about here uh, where yeah. we're trying to recover over a period of time. But if you've got a race on Friday and then you got a race again the next day, that may be a little bit different, right? Yeah, ex exactly. And actually, since since we're on that subject, one of the things I really, really want to talk about was uh, non steroidal anti-inflammatories. Okay. And um, this is something that I've seen many age groupers do to the next day when they're going through DOMS mm. is they start anti-inflammatories yeah. and anti-inflammatories once again are targeting uh inflammation and mm -hmm. decreasing inflammation in particular something called prostaglandin um but we do know that prostaglandin is a stimulatory agent for repair mm -hmm. so you gotta be very very careful with those once again if yeah. you want to if you want to repair for the next race or the rest of the season and you want to pre prepare uh, repair adequately don't use NSAIDs mm -hmm. um, during this time it's it, not only it, um, that not only did they delay the healing um, but they can also you know cause damage to your stomach sure. and uh, and your stomach in particular after a race is already susceptible yeah. um, so you know if you're going to take anything um, and once again consult your physician mm -hmm. uh, acetaminophen or Tylenol would be best because they work completely different. So Tylenol actually works in your, works centrally. So more in your brain. Mm -hmm. And so it turns off the, the, the feeling of pain in your brain where NSAIDs or, or ibuprofen, Aleve, sodium, sodium, those work at the periphery. So those actually mm -hmm. work at the muscle level. Yeah. So whereas Tylenol works in your brain, so you can actually decrease the pain signal in your brain now once again, consult your physician, mm -hmm. but um, the downside of Tylenol, it can be difficult on your liver. And we do know that racing is difficult on your liver. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, maybe neither would be, would yeah. be best. But, yeah. um, I, can, I can tell you, like, um, not saying any names, but I was at a race with some friends a, a, a few months ago, and there was a lot of ibuprofen being taken the next, that mm -hmm. the, the, the evening of the next day. And I was just, I don't, you know, I don't tell people what to do, but I will yeah. on the podcast. Yeah. Um, don't take that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, after a race. 
No, that's great. And I love it because I, I'm of the same mindset is that, you know, that inflammation and Bob even says, yes, I've always thought inflammation is a healing process and the NSAIDs inhibited this. And yes, that's exactly spot on. This type of inflammation that we're talking about is the inflammation that will ultimately make you stronger. Uh, there's, there are, you know, in, chronic inflammation is not as we've already talked about, that's, that's a little bit different, but this type of, of inflammation, when you, when you stress the body, you want it to repair, it's going to be inflamed. And yep. that's an okay thing. Uh, you just have to be able to tolerate it for you know, a period of time. Now, again, I think we, again, I, we've got to put some medical disclaimers on here because there is a lot of individuality in terms of what, what you can tolerate. And this is where you do need to be careful of that rhabdomyolysis where, the pain is so severe that um, you, you need to go to the hospital because it, you're, you're putting your body into a, a, a big stress and uh, it's not able to manage it and it's not able to repair. And, and that is life-threatening. Yep, exactly. Okay, um, so I think we, 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 we nailed that. Those, those few, few pretty good. And that was a great question, Bob. Thank, thank you for that. Yep. So it brought us through, you know, to that point about the NSAIDs. Let's talk about compression, John. So yeah. um, after after the race, I am as soon as I can get into my compression boots, I'm in my compression boots. Mm. And I'm a big believer of those. Yeah. Um, then I also have been sleeping in my Incredawear um, <laughs> sleeves. Yeah. So I've got full uh, comp you know, compression garments mm -hmm. um, that I but actually this time, and I wore them the whole next, the, the whole next day, yep. the next night and the next day. Mm. So I don't know. Do you, do you use compression? I do, but I wait a few days. I don't do okay. it right away. I, 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 I try to, I try to hold off and then, you know, three days out, I'll start putting the boots on the you know, recovery boots. And uh, same thing as you, I've got some incredible wear sleeves. I'll use that. Um, but yeah, I try to hold off a little bit. Okay. So the reason I don't hold off and I, and I'd like to hear the reason why you do is the compression has been shown not to decrease the inflammation. Okay. So, you know, the, the, those inflammatory cascades that, mm -hmm. that occur, it, it doesn't actually decrease that. What it does is actually it, it, it helps the lymphatic, uh, mm -hmm. flow. So uh, for people that don't know, your lymphatic system is basically a system. It's kind of like your venous system, but it soaks up basically the fluid that's, it, that's out of the cells and it soaks up that fluid that's out of the cells. And that contains a lot of the negative, yeah. uh, negative pieces of um, muscle breakdown. So I use it for basically increasing lymphatic return. And so what I do is once again, I do really low level. Yeah. So like I said, the, those sleeves, I think they're like less than 20 millimeters of mercury. Mm -hmm. And the, with the Normatec, I put it on like moderate low level mm -hmm. um, for, for recovery. I don't crush myself, right? Like, Because right. you can, some of these pneumatic compression devices, yeah. you can turn them up really yeah. high and you can actually create more inflammation. They've been increasing I, that I, top end pressure over, over these past five years, so... Exactly. And so, and, and I've been looking at going lower and lower. And actually, even when I teach this in school, we say that, you know, for recovery in particular, lower is better than higher. Mm -hmm. And um, because we look at the lymphatic system, you don't want to close the lymphatic system. You want to basically right. kind of milk the, and utilize the, uh, the, the, that system. So let me ask you, why do you choose to uh, wait a few days because I don't want to feel too good too soon. I know that sounds odd. But <laughs> I, 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 my mind is once I start feeling good, I, I got to get out there and train. And I'm like, no, I just need to take these three days. I just need to be really easy. I need to manage my input stress uh, as much as possible, and then uh, try to try to extend it out from there. So yeah. <laughs> I like it. No, that, <laughs> uh, this is good stuff. I mean, we could just take a fork and stick it in your leg if you want. That's true. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, so, so I also looked at, I, I, I did a, a search for other recovery modalities. Yeah. And that list is so long. It's uh, yeah. obviously massage, cryotherapy, 
they got stretching in there, uh, ultrasound, uh, electric current modalities. Um, uh, and there's there. a lot of things to use. Thermo infrared. Yeah, I, and, I, and I've used them all. Yeah, yeah. every one of them. And I, and I, and, and I teach all of these things in, in, yeah. in class. Um, and there's, there's good evidence for some of it mm -hmm. and not so good for others. Yeah. Um, as far as like massage and foam rolling, I think that some people really respond well to it. Mm -hmm. Some people not so well. Yeah. I, I would say if you're going to do massage and you're going to do foam rolling, do it light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At this point, you're not trying to actually do like a mild fascial release. What you're trying to do, once again, is stim stim stimulate the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. So oh, a, a light massage, a light foam rolling session, probably very good. Yeah. We've talked about chemotherapy before, either cryotherapy or uh, or heat. Um, we do know once again that you know cryotherapy will make you less sore, but delay the but delay the healing and potentially um, decrease the amount of healing that occurs. Mm -hmm. Thermal therapy will probably make you a little bit more sore, um, but uh, what I'm reading in the research says it actually might enhance the actual healing. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you that um, if I can, I get into a hot tub the night of a race. Yeah. I'm saying from, from that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And I did this, I did this on Saturday night, yeah. knowing that it's probably made me a little bit more sore, but yeah. I'm trying to race in three weeks. And so I want, you know, I want the, I want to heal. That was the one um, thing I was a little disappointed. I got home and I wanted to do a hot tub and our heater's broken. Uh, but oh. for, that, for that same reason, I actually wanted to to sort of build on uh, that yeah. Dom's in a weird way. Uh, I wanted to take advantage of it, uh, yeah. but you know, also started you know working in radio motion type of movements and and doing that in warm water is is uh, quite nice. So, yeah, um, you mentioned ultrasound. Mm -hmm. um, so ultrasound is once again, it's just, it's, it's heating. So you're actually use, you, using a heating modality. The downside to ultrasound is it heats in really small areas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your ultrasound sound head might be like the size of a quarter. Yeah. Um, and it takes, you know, depending on the depth of the tissue between mm -hmm. seven and 15 minutes to heat up the size of a quarter. Um, I don't know how efficacious uh, ultrasound is in that parameter. Right. Now there's a new there's a new thing uh, that's out and it's, it's called um, uh, SAM or SAM E, and it's a long uh, lasting ultrasound. And so it actually is an ultrasound treatment that goes about four hours, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's like only raises the tissue temperature a small amount, but for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And there's some really, really good research on this. And it's actually something that's coming into, we're using it more in professional sports. Um, the problem is, with it is it's $5,000 for the unit and each individual treatment, you need a special set of pads. The pads are about $10 a mm -hmm. treatment. Um, but it is something that is definitely being used in high level sports. Mm -hmm. um and uh some like local sports medicine uh clinics um are utilizing uh, are utilizing this and, you, and some insurances are actually reimbursing for it now okay oh, so okay. but but for you know for 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 doms i don't think you're going to get an insurance company to pay yeah. for it because by the time you do your doctor and get all these yeah. get all these things. and once again it's a four-hour treatment yeah um so it's something that you actually uh, it's portable and you can take it, you can actually take it with you. Mm -hmm. um, what was the other one you mentioned? Uh, electrostimulation. Yeah. Oh, I love electric stimulation yeah. for recovery. No. It's the same thing as, as kind of being active. Is So for example, you'd put the electrodes um, on your legs and you just make, make your muscles contract at a very low rate. So sometimes you see like electric stim where people are trying to like get the muscle to contract super hard. This is to get the muscle to contract the least amount possible. So it's just like this little, like a little mm -hmm. tick, tick, tick. And once again, what we're doing there, it's actually, we set it up uh, at two Hertz. So two, two times per second, it causes your muscle to contract and it can increase lymphatic um, drainage as well. Mm. And so it's a really common thing in, once again, in high-end athletics is to use uh, electric stim and a pneumatic compression at the same time. So you put the okay. boots on and then you put the, yeah. you put the electric stim underneath. 
Okay. And in the boots and you go for a couple hours and you're basically causing this very minor contraction uh, two times a second. Mm -hmm. So once again, a very, very common. Mm -hmm. um, so people that might have heard of like a Compex unit or a Mark Pro unit, those are set up, uh, they have a setup specifically for, uh, for recovery and there's good evidence to support yeah. those. So these things have, you know, they, they have some evidence. They're just not easily, maybe easily accessible or people mm -hmm. don't know exactly uh, how to use them. But um, uh, I was actually kind of kicking myself because I didn't bring my STEM unit with me. Oh, I've got yeah. everything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's interesting when I was doing all this reading on these different modalities, it kept coming back to light exercise, light exercise, light exercise. So, well, you for, uh, for sure the number one thing yep. is. Yeah. yeah, for sure. The number one thing is active recovery for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but if you could do something where you were, you know, like just sitting on the couch because you're yeah. now you're resting, doing compression and doing electric mm -hmm. stim at the same time. Yeah. Um, maybe for me, I can even have a nap when that's happening. Like, yeah, it's, it kind of puts me to sleep. Those are those are probably good things. Yeah. But once again, nothing trumps going for a walk. Yeah, that's good. And there's a good time to go for a hike too. You know, but, um, it's not downhill. It's not <laughs> downhill. Not with a heavy backpack. <laughs> exactly. You know, I honestly, if you go for a hike on flat ground, it would be perfect. Mm -hmm. The problem yeah. in Las Vegas is there's very few hikes on flat ground. No, it's not in Vegas. <laughs> exactly. Hey, this has been great. We cover a lot of ground. Some Absolutely. great questions from everyone. Thanks, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Eric. Those were really good. Yep. Yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed that. And uh, next time uh, has a little bit less doms. <laughs> yeah, right. or, maybe, or maybe more doms. We'll or, or, or at least have the perspective that when you have doms, it's a good thing. It's actually just a side effect of, of your, you are, your body is doing what it needs to do to repair. Just exactly. manage it correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't fight it. Yeah. I guess that's the yeah. other thing. Or don't fight it too much. Don't, don't okay. push through it. Don't, yeah. Don't, don't don't try and stop it and don't yeah. try and push through it. I yeah, yeah. Great, great. Right. Awesome. All right. Okay. Well, awesome. Hey. We got we got uh we're we're just training this weekend, right? Yeah, I, I'm I'm still in California for the weekend and yep. I'm gonna get some uh some more training. I'm gonna get a long bike ride in tomorrow and then nice. a big big open water swim, some really cold wa water on Sunday. I'm gonna try and avoid the sharks. Yeah. <laughs> Then we come back on Monday and uh, back back to reality for, awesome. for a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Same here. Right. Just what do you uh, this weekend? Same just thing? trying to get trying to get uh, that you know last big push for longer stuff this weekend. And yep. Uh, yep. So I'll do a long run tomorrow, long bike ride on Sunday, and uh, yeah. Then we then we're sort of just holding on until that that race at that point. Awesome. All right. Well, hey, have a great weekend and uh, we'll talk to you next week. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Okay, bye bye.